Can we talk about freedom of speech for a second? So in the midst of that uh, Charleston shooting in the, uh, the historic black church by that avowed racist, I'm not going to get into the angles that the media is trying to play where one side say it's a war on Christianity. Bullshit. Okay, it's a racially motivated crime. Yes. But was it terrorism? Yes and no. It completely and entirely depends on your definition of terrorism. Some people would contest that for someone to be a terrorist, they must be a member of a group. And the group must have a political ideology that they are trying to push via terror. Yes, the uh, Charleston shooter was a terrorist. He was not even purely racially motivated. He was politically and ideologically motivated. That is obvious. He was making a political statement through killing these people. So, yes, this guy was a terrorist, but that's beside my point. As with all tragedies, we are going to go full-blown uh, reactionary. This guy, the, this uh, narrative is getting around about racism in this country from this. And racism is a little too complex of an issue to paint it that way. There's a difference between the level of oppression that comes from police officers who profile racially, um, systemically. Uh, it's an, definitely uh, ridiculous to say that it's just a few bad cops. Well, yeah, it's a few bad cops murdering. And I do use that word deliberately and not lightly in the least murdering minorities and not and viciously just attacking not just minorities but people in general. For all that we saw of Eric Garner, do not forget that there was virtually no coverage of the horse thief from California who was chased through the hills and a, a news helicopter filmed eight cops viciously beating this man with nightsticks, kicking him in the head after he'd been handcuffed in an attack that went on for, I think, roughly 120 seconds. Imagine you're getting kicked in the head by booted police officers. Imagine you're getting nightsticked in the ribs. Now imagine another cop has taken a running kick to your ribs with steel-toed boots. Has 90 seconds passed yet? Did you hear about this guy? Do you even know what the fuck I'm talking about? So, what's happening now is there's a reaction to this, and it's pol political correct madness, and the first thing to go is the Confederate flag. <sighs> it's not a very good segue, but let me just go plain out with the Voltaire. I may not agree with what you say, sir, but I will defend... To the death, you're right to say it. Sure, we can weasel around and say, yeah, you can still have a Confederate flag, but Walmart's not going to sell it to you. eBay's not going to sell it to you. It's getting taken off your flag, and maybe that's all well and good. And maybe it's a slippery slope fallacy. But the way feminism has been going, the way things are getting banned, with, you know, left and right, due to reactionary, uneducated, um, ridiculous fallacies of equivocation, fallacies of composition. Look, the Confederate flag didn't do shit. And it's just a flag. And banning that flag will achieve absolutely nothing. Say it with me, children. Banning, discrediting, saying you shouldn't have a Confederate flag... You shouldn't fly the old stars and bars. What will that achieve in this country? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. 
one more time, just in case you didn't understand me. Nothing. If I see a guy driving down the street and he's in a big white F-350 with the fucking six wheels and he's got the truck nuts and his back windshield has got the decal of the stars and bars, what are my immediate prejudices toward this person? He's white. He's male, he's from south of the Mason-Dixon line, he's racist, and he's uneducated. Say what you will about that prejudice. But it doesn't sound very much like I like the Confederate flag, or that I want one, or that I've ever owned one, or that I think the way somebody who has a Confederate flag might think. Do I have a problem with that Confederate flag? That he has one. That he likes one. No. Do I care if I see his truck with the flag? Or the flag in front of his house? Or the flag in the fucking Capitol building? No. As an atheist, do I care if I see the Ten Commandments in a courtroom? No. <laughs> I don't. I don't fucking care. Because I don't think that symbols produce reality. Like, if I fucking show you a fucking a star and a crescent moon, am I going to magically hypnotize you into being an, a fucking Muslim? If I show you a cross, are you... Does that make me or you Christian? Uh, fucking... No. I've made a video about how art and expression is not an action. Ban every Confederate flag that you want. Fucking ban truck nuts, ban Ford F-350s, and ban red solo cups. Fucking deport Garth Brooks to the fucking moon. You will achieve nothing. Censorship is one of the purest forms of evil in the world. It is entirely unproductive entirely like even banning curse words said in class or something like getting in trouble for cussing for kids achieves nothing it doesn't teach somebody respect to take away rights however small or large you can't make somebody respect a minority as a human being if you take away a symbol from him. Do you know how many fucking outlets that still sell Confederate flags sold Confederate flags because of this fucking Barbara Streisand effect bullshit where drawing attention to this flag has done nothing but add to its power and to its influence as a symbol that all you've done is polarize between people who care too much about symbols, no matter what how negative their con um, connotations are, versus people who hold too little respect for minorities. The guy who shot up that church is probably in no better mental condition than the guy who shot up the fucking theater in Aurora, Colorado. They're mentally insane. Our country has virtually nothing set up to treat insane people. Oh, you got no insurance? Well, you can't hospitalize the guy because that costs tens of thousands of dollars. You probably couldn't even afford the hundreds of dollars that medication to treat his uh, problems costs. I am very aware of the way the mental health system works. I've known people, some of my best friends have gone through that stuff. You know, I've suffered from clinical depression. Now I've never had any delusional thoughts of any kind. I've never even been suicidal, let alone homicidal. But I've been around these people. And I've been around people who cannot tell the difference between reality and unreality. And I've been around people who literally think that there are CIA agents that are out tracking them and preparing to kill them. And these people are around. And they can get guns. And they can do things. And we're lucky 
that Charleston doesn't happen every single day. <laughs> Is gun control the answer? Probably. Can it happen in our country right now? No. You're not going to get any substantial gun control reform. Could we spend more money treating the mentally ill, the disabled, discharged veterans, all these kinds of people where things like this kind of happens and can happen to people, whether it's suicide or homicide? Can we do better there? Absolutely. Can we reform the healthcare system to better treat the needs of people and to be able to safely isolate people like this from re from society without them getting hurt or anybody else getting hurt and everything's win-win. Yes, we can. We have the money and we don't spend it. So we're looking for solutions in all the wrong places. We're looking at censorship. We're looking at conditioning of children in school. Like what fucking assembly program can we bring to these kids' schools? What fucking behaviors can we force on people? What fucking can we take away? What we can and can't show on television? How are we supposed to talk about this shit? No. Barking up the wrong fuck tree. Okay? And I gotta tell you, if I was on a fucking picket line, and here's the line, and you got anti-protesters, or you got the Westboro Baptist Church right here, and we got anti-protesters over here, and I'm standing here, and somebody starts crossing the line to go attack the Westboro Baptist Church. Guess whose ass I'm going to kick? It ain't the Westboro Baptist Church. I will hate them with every fiber of my being. But if somebody goes to try to fucking hurt them, to, to use violence to stop them from operating under their constitutional rights to free speech, guess whose ass I'm going to kick? It's going to be the guy who's the anti-protester crossing the line to go attack these people. It don't matter how fucking disgusting they are. Guess who's the terrorist? The guy who comes after them with violence. You will achieve nothing from trying to shut down the KKK. You will achieve nothing from going after fucking whatever dissenting, fringe, racist, bigoted group you want. You will achieve nothing by trying to silence them. The only victory that is possible is by propagating the correct way of living. Our culture has come leaps and fucking bounds. And for everything that Martin Luther King did... For everything that your Rosa Parks and your Malcolm X's, whenever all they did, for every one of those, they are matched by a Chris Rock, by a Denzel Washington, by a Jamie Foxx, by a Kevin Hart. Culture. Just seeing and allowing people to become icons and to be examples changes over time passively and America is wonderfully set up to progress liberally but Marxism one way is no better than fascism the other and you can overclock from the right to the fucking far far right to the far left either way. And if you look at it like sane person, too far left, too far right. And this fucking entire swath right here on the fucking dial is not fucking productive. You cannot make equality by crushing those who have more. You cannot produce peace and brotherhood by oppression and fascism. It does not work. You must go into society and produce the better ideas to be the change you want to see in the world. To 
fucking spend your dollars, cast your votes, and even fucking be your television ratings appropriately. And change will happen naturally. No violence, no censorship, no fucking banning of activity is necessary. And it's not productive. It produces a violent counter change. Trying to ban something boosts its sales. F fucking swearing is cool to children because they're not allowed to do it. You know how how much of a fucking teen alcoholism problem they have in countries where the drinking age is like 16? If a kid in his formative years is introduced to alcohol, and he's like, oh, here, here's some alcohol, and they're like, oh, it makes me sick, it dehydrates me, and it's not that great of a high. Fuck alcohol. Do <laughs> you think they have the same fucking problems when, with college-age children and shit? I don't. Anyway, jumped around a little bit too much on this topic. All I can say is leave the stars and bars alone. Pfft, fucking didn't do shit. They don't do shit. And it don't even fucking matter what they represent. Banning them will only make them more popular. And not only that, not only is it fucking pointless and counterproductive, it's morally reprehensible. That's your lesson for the day. Thanks for watching.